Uh, all right, so thank you everyone for coming here. Uh, I will talk today about Secator in Drupal 8. Uh, my name is Victor Valtz. And so just a few words about myself. Uh, I've been maintaining the Secator module for a couple of years already for Drupal 6 and Drupal 7. And I work as a CTO for CK Source, a company that created CK Editor. Uh, I'll talk today about the status of uh, WYSIWYG editing in Drupal 7. I will tell you about the new features that uh, Drupal 8 offers. Uh, I'll tell you a bit about some cool features inside CK Editor itself. Uh, one of them is ACF, Advanced Content Filter, and the other one is widgets. Uh, widgets were created actually uh, thanks to Drupal 8 uh, requirements. Uh, we had to introduce images with captions for Drupal 8 and we ended up with a very powerful feature called widgets. Uh, I'll tell you how to extend the uh, functionality of CK Editor in Drupal uh, 8 by uh, adding your own plugins or third party plugins that you found somewhere. Uh, I will tell you a little bit about other things like uh, security or migration. All right, so let's start with Drupal 7. Uh, this is the default WYSIWYG editor in Drupal 7. <laughs> uh, and yeah, it's very simple and, and, and fast. It's clear, <laughs> it has no bugs. Uh, yeah, so when I saw it for the first time many, many years back, uh, my reaction was like this. <laughs> uh, yeah, but uh, thankfully, uh, after you play with Drupal for a while, you see that there are contrib modules which you can install to add some uh, functionality on top of the core Drupal. And you have actually two very good options in Drupal 7. One of them is the WYSIWYG modules, uh, WYSIWYG module, and the other one is CK Editor module. Uh, both of them have their strong uh, sites and some weak sites. Uh, and together they are quite popular. Uh, there are almost uh, 600,000 sites running Drupal 7 together with one of them. Uh, this is awesome, but uh, there is a problem with this. Uh, you have to spend time uh, on things like research. You have to choose which module to use. You have to almost, uh, you have two modules with, which has the same popularity. Uh, you have to choose which editor to use, actually. And then if you decide, for example, to use CK Editor, you have to pick up which distribution of, of the editor you want to use. So it's, you know, we spend some time on it. Uh, then you have to install the thing that you decided to install, uh, test it, configure it, and things like that. And then you have to maintain this thing, which again takes time. And even if you uh, install a Secutor module, for example, you will still face some problems. Uh, for example, you configured a uh, CK editor, you uh, configured it to use the image button, but after you save some content with images, you see that images are lost because you configure a CK editor in one place and you configure text formats in another place. So there is a configuration mismatch many times. And uh, up to recently, you had also this uh, confusion when you install the CK editor module, because you installed CK editor module, but CK editor wasn't there. So, uh, well, duh. Uh, yeah, so Drupal 8. CK editor is in core, so we don't have to search, test, install. And let's say that, I don't know, it took two hours to do some research, installation, and things like that. It means that as a community, we saved almost one million hours in Drupal 8. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> and we can spend it on, I don't know, do writing new modules for Drupal or, or things like that. Or we can simply party. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so what do we have in Drupal 8? Uh, we can select any text editor, actually, and uh, text formats and editors administration page. You don't have to use CK Editor, you can use any uh, other editors uh, that will be available for Drupal 8. Uh, you have some really cool drag and drop toolbar configurator. Uh, it's really awesome. It's, you know, uh, the accessibility is perfect of this tool and, and things like that. Uh, what's really cool uh, that is that the uh, HTML filter settings are automatically updated when you change CK Editor configuration. And there is also really nice uh, API that lets you register additional Secutor plugins. So if you want to extend the features of Secutor in core, you can do it very easily. Uh, yeah, so I have I prepared a couple of uh, videos that show how Secutor works in uh, Drupal 8. Uh, 
This video shows how we can configure uh, text formats uh, in Drupal 8. Uh, here we add the table button to the toolbar. And see that the list of uh, allowed HTML tags has been extended automatically with all the tags that are required by the table uh, button. So, and you have you see that there are a couple of uh, tags that you have you would have to place manually in the list of allowed HTML tags, and you know, that's sometimes hard. Here we add the underline button to the toolbar. See that the U element uh, has been added automatically as well. And it works also in the opposite side. So if you remove the underline button, uh, the element will be removed here as well. You see that this that this is not happening always. I will show you another video where uh, this uh, administration uh, form will work in a little bit different way. Uh, here we have some interesting thing. We add the styles combo, which actually comes with uh, configuration options that you can set. <coughs> So the configuration options are shown only when uh, a feature is enabled in CK Editor. And what is really cool, you can create uh, your own modules that provide your own plugins that extend this uh, configuration uh, form as well. And uh, this, we added just the styles button to the toolbar, which uh, lets you style content with, with classes or elements with classes. And what is really cool here that is that we just uh, told CK Editor to use headers to style the content with some classes. And those headers from the uh, configuration settings were added to the list of allowed HTML tags as well. And why is this happening? Uh, or how is this happening? Uh, this is possible thanks to a, a hidden CK Editor instance running there behind. And Drupal contacts CK Editor asking it for the list of HTML elements that it needs. So, you know, there is a perfect connection between the administration area and CK Editor. Oh, sorry. Yeah, actually this is the end of this video. So let's move on to another slide. Uh, all right, so let's see the next video. Here we'll configure uh, the basic toolbar and we add the strike element, actually S element, to create strike content. Now we create some uh, sample article with some strike text. Sorry, I don't type fast, <laughs> even for the video. <laughs> Uh, all right, so yeah, it worked. Uh, yeah, now let's try to do something nasty and let's change the text format configuration. <coughs> and let's remove the strike button and see what <coughs> will happen. Oh, the, str the S element is still there. Why, why, why did it happen? Uh, this is because, uh, this is by design. Uh, this is because you already saved this text format, so there is a possibility that you created already some uh, content with uh, the S element, and if uh, now the configuration, uh, the scripts here that you know automate this stuff will remove uh, the stack automatically, you could possibly end up with some broken content. So if you already save the text format and you remove some buttons, if you want to disallow some tags, you have to do it manually. And now let's see how this will affect uh, the article that we will edit again. <coughs> so see that the strike button isn't there, but you see still uh, the strike, strike text in, in the editor. And of course the element is still there, although the button is is not available. Yeah, so the content is still left there. Uh, all right, so let's move on to another slide. Uh, I will tell you now about uh, the advanced content filter. Uh, advanced content filter is a feature that 
lets you remove uh, unwanted content in the editor. <laughs> uh, yeah, so you can disallow certain tags and those tags will be uh, not allowed uh, already in the editor. So if you disallow tables in the uh, text format configuration, uh, Siki editor will actually already remove them to provide some uh, better WYSIWYG uh, experience. Of course, the uh, filters in Drupal will still uh, remove any tags that Siki editor will leave or uh, I don't know, if you remove uh, Siki editor and you know, uh, uh, use plain text server or if you, I don't know, alter the post request, still the filters are there in Drupal, but uh, you know, Siki editor, uh, by doing the same uh, filtering straight in the uh, editing area, uh, provides some better WYSIWYG experience because there is no mismatch between the things that you have in the editor and the thing that you see after uh, saving the note in, in Drupal. And uh, the ACF is uh, quite smart. If you, for example, uh, disallow the B element but allow strong elements, uh, CK editor will transform this B into strong because they have more or less the same meaning. So. Uh, the ACF is quite smart. And because uh, ACF actually can strip some tags, whenever you switch text format, you may see such a pop-up message. Of course, you will not lose any uh, content unless you save uh, an article, but you just bear in mind that you know, ACF may remove some things. Uh, yeah, so one more video this time about ACF. So uh, we'll add CK editor to restricted format just to uh, have more configurations uh, to be shown. And now let's create some content and try to see ACF in action. Let's use the restricted HTML text format and paste some nasty HTML content. Oh, sorry, I was too late. Uh, yeah, so we are pasting in the source mode of CK editor a uh, script tag and some footer element. Uh, both of them are disallowed in a restricted HTML text format. But it means that also CK editor will at make an attempt to remove them. So let's see, and ACF will run whenever you switch from source mode to WYSIWYG mode, or ACF will run whenever you paste content, so it runs in, in different situations. So uh, yeah, we have script and footer. We just switch to WYSIWYG element. Let's go to WYSIWYG mode. And we see that the script uh, element has been removed completely because it doesn't make sense to keep the content of the script element uh, when we remove the script element. But the content of uh, footer element has still some meaning and it's just a pure text. So we, we left the content of the footer element and replaced it with you know some other element that may make sense and is allowed in CK editor. All right, so let's move on. Now let's copy some more complex data structure. This is actually some uh, WCAG checklist. And we have here uh, headers at the top and a table with some uh, lists inside. Now let's see what will happen if we paste it to this editor uh, which doesn't support tables, uh, doesn't support headers. Uh, we see that actually CK removed uh, almost uh, all, the, actually removed the, these elements, I mean tables and headers. But the text has been left and same with list, so we ended up with some clean structure here which still has the same meaning. Now let's switch to the basic format. Uh, here the situation is a bit different. Uh, we allow tables and by configuring the styles combo to accept uh, header two and header three, uh, we allow also headers. So let's paste content here and see that headers are left at the top and, and it's always uh, left the table. And uh, ACF uh, is enabled when HTML filter is enabled in text format. So 
And when we switch to a text format where HTML filter is uh, not enabled, uh, ACF is not enabled by default, and we'll see what problems it brings. And this is Chrome. We just paste content from external website uh, where the external website was using classes to style the content to make red header and things like that. But Chrome thinks that it would be cool to you know, actually copy all those styles to your website. So it transforms them to inline styles yay, and creates a huge mess in, uh, in your content. You see, uh, it was actually a header with some class, but when you copy it in Chrome, uh, you end up with something like this. And it's happening in Chrome, it doesn't happen in Firefox, for example. And ACF can remove this thing. All right, so here we have Firefox. Uh, we'll do the same thing with, with Firefox. Uh, yeah, we'll use the full HTML text format to use editor without ACF. We'll copy the same uh, table. And then I'm actually Secutor did the same job here. And you see that the results in Chrome and, and Firefox are really different. So if you'd like to have the same result in uh, Google Chrome as well, uh, you should have ACF enabled. I'll show you later, later how you can do this in fact. Yeah, so the content in, in Firefox is much cleaner. And this is just pure information that you actually wanted to copy from, from the external website. All right, so uh, let's switch to another topic. Let's see what editing possibilities we have in Drupal 8. Actually, uh, Drupal 8 comes with classic editor, which you might already know because this is the default solution that is running uh, in Drupal 6 or Drupal 7 if you install CK editor module. And Drupal 8 comes with a very cool inline editor. And yeah, so the classic editor is used in the administration backend. So it's quite similar to the thing that you should be already familiar with. It's using iframes, which means that the backend team has no effect on the styling of the editing area. Uh, and the cool thing is that in Drupal 8, uh, front-end teams may register some style sheets to make uh, the editable inside CK editor a little, more, more, a little bit more similar to what your uh, end users will see when you create an article. All right, so this is a uh, classic editor in action. You see that you know, the fonts are not exactly the same like they will uh, be on the article when we save it. And we have quick editing option where uh, no iframes are used. So it means that CSS styles from the surrounding website will actually uh, be inherited by the editing area. So everything that you will edit inside the editor will look exactly the same uh, when you save it. So this is uh, really WYSIWYG, finally. Uh, yeah, just to show you an example, this is an article uh, in Drupal 8. You have a quick edit option in top right corner and when you click on it, you have the editor available and the styling of the article is you know, the same when you enable the editor, because this is the editing area. Uh, all right, so a few words about how we can style content in uh, the editor in Drupal 8. Uh, the recommended way is to use uh, CS style, CSS style definitions in your themes. You can define some classes to you know, allow your users to style content in a consistent way. Uh, when you define these classes, you can uh, you know, you can define which classes are actually uh, enabled for the end user by, by using uh, the settings form that I shown earlier. And, you know, using classes is cool because you have a semantic markup uh, and so you separate it from the visual, you separate the markup from, from the visual presentation, actually. And this is handy because you have consistent styling on your website. You uh, work less because you don't have to, you know, search for a previous article where you use some styling and you want to use it again. It's, it's a much better approach. Uh, yeah, but what if your customers insist on using the color buttons, for example? <laughs> there is a solution for that. Uh, but first, let me mention that uh, the CKDR in Drupal core is not actually the full preset, which you 
perhaps downloaded it in the past. This is actually more a standard-like uh, distribution where some plugins like color buttons are not available. Uh, but by using a very simple API, you can add any plugins you want to your Drupal 8 and you know, uh, make it cool for your customers. Yeah, so when you create some module that provides plugins, you can enable it as usual and the buttons will show up just like you know the buttons provided by the core distribution of CK Editor in Drupal. And ta-da, your customers can create beautiful websites again. <laughs> uh, all right. So uh, <laughs> let's switch to another topic, uh, widgets. As I said before, widgets were introduced uh, thanks to Drupal 8 and the requirement of uh, having to produce images with captions. Uh, we created a prototype in two days and then you know, ended up uh, working on this feature for one year. <laughs> uh, widgets are rich content units that at, act as a single entity. I will uh, show you later what it means, in fact. And it is really simple to pre provide your own uh, widgets uh, thanks to the generic widget plugin which provides this feature. All right, so uh, to show you what widgets are, I will show you uh, first how we used to do, uh, how we used to deal with HTML structures in the past when we used templates in CK Editor. Uh, so basically templates, it was a plugin in CK Editor which allowed you to insert some HTML snippets into the editor. Uh, but the problem was that when you inserted such HTML structure, you had no control over it. It was easy to break it, delete parts of it. Uh, you, of course, had no possibility to drag and drop the structure later. And of course, this, this feature is not available in Drupal uh, 8 uh, by default. I simply mentioned it to show you uh, the power of widgets. Yeah, so let's see uh, templates in action. This is a dialog window provided by the templates plugin. Uh, we select here an image and title template, and when you uh, insert something like this into CK Editor, we can end up with uh, an image on the left side, title at the top, and some text about the image on the uh, below. Uh, the problem with this is that actually there's no control over what uh, users can enter in the title element. They can insert a table or the whole article. Uh, there's no control over uh, the different pieces of the structure, so users could delete the image, but leaving the contextual text information on the right side. So uh, this is not cool when working with some structures, which should be immutable. Uh, so what's the solution? Of course, widgets, yay. Uh, <laughs> so with widgets you can uh, work with those structures as a whole. We can s select the whole widget, copy it, delete it. You can drag and drop a widget. Uh, you can define which parts of widgets should be editable. So we can make the whole widget uneditable, for example. Uh, you can upcast and downcast uh, widgets to simpler data format, so we can represent complex structure in CK Editor, but save it as something simple to possibly modify how it will look like in the future. Uh, we can provide uh, common dialogues, context menu for widgets, and provide some cons consistent look and feel for similar structures. Yeah, so yeah. widgets are cool in general. Uh, yeah, so uh, let's see a sample widget first to understand how they look like. Uh, this is a very sample uh, widget that I took from our tutorial about creating widgets. Uh, when you read our tutorial, you will be able to actually create your own widget. Uh, whenever you create uh, a widget, you get one feature for free. It's the drag and drop handle in the top uh, left corner. Uh, and you have a couple of uh, other cool things in a widget. You can as I said before, you can define which parts are actually editable uh, in, in, in the HTML structures. Here we defined two editable parts. And you can define different ACF settings for each editable in, inside the structure. So here, for example, in the title, we disallowed tables, uh, images. We just allowed some basic styling. But in the second element, we allowed using things like lists, for example. So whenever you 
uh, allow your customers to insert some uh, structures which, which are repeated in the contents. Widgets are perfect for that. And let's see at some more examples of widgets. Uh, yeah, the new image plugin in Drupal 8 is actually a widget. Uh, we have some video here. Uh, the image plugin in Drupal 8 is actually using Drupal dialogues. Uh, you are free to use either Drupal dialogues or built-in CK editor dialog windows if you write your own plugins. Uh, yeah, we select some image here. We can we define some alternative text, and we can said that our image comes with a caption. I see that we have a caption here at the bottom of uh, the image. And see that the caption actually has some ACF rules defined as well. Uh, you are not able to insert list into a, into a caption and things like that. And we can resize images, yay, and you can drag and drop them. And basically, you can do the same thing with your own widgets. And yeah, this is uh, something that I told you uh, before. You can actually represent uh, more complex structures uh, in a simple form when you want to s uh, save them in a database. Here we uh, represented a figure element with a caption and image, just as an image element with some data attributes. So if you I don't know, distribute your content into multiple channels or if you you know, want to have the possibility of changing how uh, images with captions are rendered in the future, this uh, a cool way to do this. All right, so end of the video. Uh, yeah, let me go a little bit into, a little bit, a little bit more into details here. Uh, yeah, this is the downcasted form, which is uh, saved in the database. This, is, this form is returned by CK Editor when you save an article or switch to the source mode. It's just an image element with some data attributes which actually hold the caption information. And the upcasted uh, uh, element which is shown in the editor has figure image click caption elements and some uh, div elements which wrap the whole widget which are added automatically by the widget plugin. So for example, we have the drag handler element. You don't uh, do this you know, by yourself, it's added automatically by, uh, by the widget plugin when you create a widget. And you know, how does it happen that the simple image element is actually replaced with, uh, actually, actually shown with the caption in Drupal? Uh, Drupal 8 comes with a filter caption filter, which scans for uh, all elements with data caption attribute and wraps them with, with, such, a tem with such template. So you are free to edit this template and render images with caption in your own way. And yeah, the same thing shown in a little bit different way. Uh, we have some operation that happen uh, on the Secutor side. Uh, the image is uh, replaced with some figure and fig caption elements. And CK Editor, when uh, it returns the data back, it does the downcasting of this uh, complex form to a simple image element. And on the Drupal side, it takes those images and again, makes a complex structure from it. Uh, sorry. One more example of widgets is the Magix plugin. Uh, the Magix plugin shows you a little bit different thing. Uh, uh, it's uh, a plugin in CK Eater that uh, lets you create mathematical formulas. It's not enabled in Drupal 8 by default, but you can you know, provide a module which uh, enables it. And this plugin return, returns uh, a span element with some uh, LaTeX markup inside. And what's cool here is that the Magix library is making a mess in DOM when it works. So you can uh, write widgets which use an iframe to actually encapsulate libraries that you know, are troublesome for you. So you can represent a simple span element by using an iframe with a magic inside. All right, so let's see. I have just two more examples of widgets. I won't bore you that much with widgets. Uh, there is a code snippet plugin for CK Editor, which returns a beautiful pre-element with code element inside. Uh, this plugin is using uh, the highlight.js library. And what it does is uh, this highlight.js library actually replaces the 
text information that you have in the code element with you know uh, hundreds of span elements to uh, highlight the the code. So uh, again, widget uh, allows you to work with the complex data structure in CK Editor, but it returns back a very simple data structure. And the last example uh, regarding widgets, uh, this is uh, actually a sample plugin, a uh, chart plugin that I wrote by myself while creating this presentation. I wanted to see how actually it's hard to create widgets uh, by following our tutorials. Uh, this plugin is using uh, the chart.js library and it returns maybe, you know, a little bit stupid element. Uh, it returns a diff element with some data attributes that uh, lets you create a chart from it on your uh, website, again, using J JavaScript by using the data information from this element. And what it does internally, the, this plugin in CK Editor, is that it takes this diff element with some data attributes and it adds some canvas element uh, to this uh, diff element and runs chart to chart.js to actually render the chart in this canvas element. But what we actually return is just a diff element with some data attributes, so uh, you are free to, I don't know, use a different library later to render the same chart or things like that. All right, so let me just summarize the features, the feature of widgets. Uh, we can, thanks to widgets, we can work with complex data structures that will not break. Uh, you know, as I said before, you can define editables, but you can define uh, zero editables to make the whole widget not editable unless you make it editable with some dialog window. Uh, this is also a convenient solution for using some external JavaScript presentation libraries that even may break the DOM, then you can encapsulate them with, with, with an iframe. Uh, you can save simpler forms if you like and render which forms in WYSIWYG. Uh, when you check the simple box uh, tutorial, you'll see that you actually uh, save the same form that you see in WYSIWYG. You are not obliged to you know, render a different form in WYSIWYG and uh, you can return the same thing that you have in WYSIWYG, actually. And of course, when you save simple forms, you can transform them using filters in Drupal, which you can change at any moment without having to you know, do some uh, SQL magic to replace the content if you would save you know, the final markup otherwise. Uh, all right, so <laughs> let's switch topics again. Uh, I will tell you about writing plugins. Uh, of course, I will not explain you how to write plugins for Secutor because uh, it's impossible in a few minutes. Uh, I will tell you how you can actually enable plugins in Drupal and how you can provide your own configuration options, which allows you to do some magic as well. Uh, all right, so adding new plugins. Uh, first of all, you don't have to write your own plugins. Uh, you can use the one that are already available in Secutor Addons repository. There are over 200 plugins already available. Uh, but if you like, you can write your own plugins. You can use the Secutor plugin SDK for and see tutorials that we have there. And you can see the Secutor widget SDK where we have tutorials as well. Uh, you know, as, a dev as developers, we understood that this is way to uh, teach others how to create stuff is to create tutorials. Uh, if you see that some documentation is still confusing or things like that, just feel free to get in touch with us and you know, sh just point us to the weakest point points in our documentation. All right, so uh, now let me show you how you can create plugins uh, in Drupal to register Secutor plugins and how you can make them available in the uh, text, config text format uh, administration interface. So uh, the only interface that you have to implement when you provide your own module is the Secutor plugin interface. And I'm surprised how simple it is. Uh, Actually, you have to just define a couple of functions. I listed the three most important ones here. Uh, you have to define the de dependencies if your plugin depends on some other plugin. You have to just show the path to the plugin.js file, which is simple, of course. And if you want to provide some configuration settings for your plugin, you just do this by the get config function. And ta-da, that's it. It's, it's really simple. Uh, 
If your plugin provides a button, you have to inform the administration interface about this. Uh, and you have one function for that. It's called get buttons, and it's really simple again. Uh, if you want to provide your own configuration settings in the administration area, uh, again, you have to just implement one function and return a simple array to, uh, I don't know, provide a text area or checkboxes or whatever form elements you want to return here. And last thing, if your plugin should be enabled under certain conditions, for example, if you uh, want to provide a list style plugin which allows you to style um, HTML lists, you can use the is enabled function to enable your plugin on when, for example, the numbered uh, list button is enabled in CT Editor. And I'm not going to teach you how to do this. I will not dive into the API details. I created sample modules for each of the interfaces, apart from the styles combo. The styles combo uh, plugin is uh, actually available in core. So if you want to create your own plugins, just you know follow the, these links and we'll have a really simple uh, plugins to follow. Uh, yeah, so you're probably surprised by the small number of configuration options for CT Editor that are available in Drupal 8. I think this is really cool because uh, in CT Editor module for Drupal 6 and Drupal 7, I ended up with you know, a zillion of configuration options which are confusing at the end, I believe. Uh, anyway, if you want to extend the list of possible configuration options in Drupal 8, you have a very simple hook provided by the editor module, and you are free to do magic with this. So, for example, you can uh, set any configuration options, including Secretor skin. So you don't have to stick with the default skin that is in Drupal 8. You can use, for example, monocolor skin, which provides some colorful icons. Uh, Again, this is a module that I created, and you can you know, use it as an example uh, on how to uh, work with Sigidor uh, in Drupal 8 and create, how to create your own modules. And there's one more cool thing related to this uh, uh, possibility of changing uh, configuration options. You can actually enable ACF for uh, when, uh, even when HTML filter is disabled. So with a simple a hook you can enable NCF even for the full HTML text format. All right, so we are reaching the end of this presentation almost. Just a few, a few words about the security. Uh, Drupal in general stores content uh, as is. Uh, it doesn't remove any cross-site scripting attempts when the data is saved. And this is a potential threat for WYSIWYG editors and uh, ACF is not a security filter. In fact, it removes elements and things like that, but it's, it was not designed to uh, remove cross-site scripting attempts. But thankfully, uh, Drupal 8 is doing a similar thing to what Secure Module was doing for Drupal 6 and Drupal 7. It actually runs some security filters before the content is passed to CK Editor, so you are safe and you don't have to worry about any hacking attempts using music <coughs> editors. All right, so last slide, uh, migration. Uh, I have to admit that there is no easy way to uh, port Secutor uh, profiles from Drupal 7 automatically, uh, mainly because actually you are free to uh, use any Secutor distribution you wanted to, and there was a zillion of options in the Secutor modules. So you have to somehow port your configuration from Drupal 7 manually. Uh, if you have never used Siki Editor before and you relied on things like Autoparagraph and things like that, there is a WYSIWYG library, uh, line breaks module which should help you deal with this. Uh, if you have never used Siki Editor before and you are worried about some no, markup, you can use the Migrate API. Actually, you have no other option, but you <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, and so if you use some custom markup, you can write plugins or widgets to uh, allow editing it in CK Editor. Yeah, so uh, that's it. Uh, you can see this presentation on GitHub if you would like to check out the slides that I showed to you. Uh, all the sample modules and plugins that I mentioned during this presentation are available on GitHub. Uh, feel free to follow CK Editor on Twitter. If you have any questions, you can contact me at Twitter or using the contact, f contact form at drupal.org. 
and I encourage you to leave me some feedback. Uh, yeah, I don't present often, and my English is, let's say, weak, so uh, yeah, I encourage you to leave some feedback. Thank you. All right, so uh, any questions? Maybe. <laughs> No, no, this is already available. Uh, just, you know, if you launch Drupal 8 beta this week, you'll see everything that I show, showed here. <coughs> yeah? Uh, I have, yeah, Wim, do you want? Uh, Wim is uh, actually one of the authors of the Secutor module in Drupal 8, so I will let him answer maybe this question. Yeah. Repeat the question first. The, the question was essentially, um, I think uh, Victor showed the um, plugin contextual interface, CK Editor plugin contextual interface, which allows you to have a CK Editor plugin be enabled based on the context that it is in. But uh, Kevin asked about that, uh, whether, what, whether you have a very rich context or a limited context. Essentially, can you react to any sort of magical context? In, for example, a URL, the current user, that sort of thing. In theory, you could probably react to the current user and current URL, but it's definitely not designed to do that. The context that you get are the, inter the settings for the uh, text format and for the text editor. So based on however the user has configured everything related to text editing, you can react to that. So the idea is really to enable it whether if a certain filter is enabled, for example. So if filter foo foos and bar are both enabled, then you show a button that allows you to control both in a meaningful manner. So it's, it's meant to react to filters and perhaps a complex combination of certain buttons being enabled. But in general, it should be something that's necessary fairly rarely because most things are using buttons. So uh, it's for the advanced use cases essentially. Uh, actually, congrats for him for providing this awesome integration with Drupal 8. Can I have to say something as well? Because as Victor has said, um, they developed Seek Editor widgets, especially for Drupal 8, because we insisted that uh, that would be present because we believed um, that it would be instrumental for you guys to have a solid framework to innovate and to, to make cool things that were nigh impossible to do without such a foundation. And as he said, it was prototyped roughly in two days, but it took many months to get it to a stable point. So thanks to CK Editor for the big investment there. Thanks. Uh, yeah, so any other questions? Yeah. Um, I'm sorry if I, it, I'm not sure the status of something, so maybe my questions are actually kind of dumb, but um, uh, what's the status of like providing uh, widgets for certain modules in Drupal 7? The CK editor, the CK editor um, uh, JavaScript, you know, the rich text editor has widgets in a version that's Drupal 7 compatible as well, I assume? Uh, as I said before, um, actually users have had freedom uh, with uh, using any distribu secure distribution that they wanted to. Uh, if your own module would like to rely on widgets, uh, you can do this. I've seen some attempts of uh, using widgets uh, to uh, allow users to work with complex structures like, I don't know, references to some uh, nodes inside the editor and widgets is a perfect uh, tool for that. And yeah, you are, are actually free to use widgets in Drupal 7. This is uh, why I uh, mentioned them here because I thought that would be useful also not only for Drupal 8 users, you will not switch you know, immediately to, to Drupal 8, but you can also use uh, widgets in Drupal 7. It's not just my um, ignorance of CK Editor, but also maybe the status in Drupal 8, but my use case is like 
um, you know, media elements, obviously, uh, packages of figures with like, you know, some sort of rich tech, uh, some sort of rich media element, and then captions and various other things. And what would be the status maybe for the Drupal 7 media module and then for the Drupal 8 media yeah, solutions? For, uh, actually, and how does uh, that all work together and where, we, where actually are we the in situation, those, both those platforms? Yeah, the situation could be improved in, in, in Drupal 7, I believe. Uh, we have some issue that is pending for many months already, but I hope to uh, give a review of a patch there. It's uh, related to the media module. Uh, it's about making a secure module more uh, uh, more aware of plugins, and we can also target this uh, this requirement. Uh, it will be hmm, it might be a little bit hard. We should encourage users to I know use the CDN version, which uh, has access to all the plugins, or to uh, download CKEater with the widget plugin, because the other option that you will have actually. Assuming that a uh, user has installed CK Editor without the widgets plugin, is to provide the widgets plugin with your module. But then the situation is um, a little bit wrong because the widgets plugin that you will provide in your module may come from different version of CK Editor that the, CK, uh, that the user is using uh, together with the CK Editor module or the WYSIWYG module. So uh, the most correct solution for that will be uh, to encourage users to and not use the full ver full preset of CK Editor, but to use uh, either the CDN version with with uh, full all or standard all, or to download a customized build with the WYSIWYG, uh, sorry, with uh, widgets plugin. Yeah. yeah, sure. I can answer one bit of that. You were asking about embedding media, for example. Um, in Yeah, so the question is, uh, can I use something like widgets and uh, for, for media embedding, probably also entity embedding in general, image galleries potentially, can I use that via CK Editor widgets to have a nice editing experience? That's kind of the question. And the answer is in seven, I don't know, uh, to be honest, if there is any work being done actively to make that work there. Precisely because, as Victor is indicating, it is kind of tricky to resolve potential conflicts between different versions because there was not, nothing that ships with Drupal, nor with CK Editor that module because of uh, licensing constraints back then. Theoretically, I guess it's possible today, but it's not really accepted to include JavaScript libraries in modules in general uh, on Drupal.org. So in Drupal 7, it's a bit tricky, but in Drupal 8, um, people who are actively working on the media module and things related to the media module there are actually implementing a CK Editor widget to easily select, uh, so you can basically say, I want to select a node, then you can select which node, then you can choose in which view mode to display it in, and you can even choose to display just certain fields. And the really cool thing is that then within the widget, you will not see some arcane structure that you would see today in, in the editor, like square brackets with a bunch of JSON in between, something like that. No, what you will see in Drupal 8, or in Drupal 7 if they port it back to Drupal 7, is the actual rendered preview of what it will look like on the front end. So you will see that, be able to click on it, and then get a dialogue to change it. So that's kind of, that's the target. All right, so? Hi. Thank you for an awesome job. Thanks. Uh, I want to comment on a D7 status. Mm -hmm. um, a little known fact that is that with the D7 CK Editor module, you can actually add in plugins from uh, like um, CK plugins mm -hmm. from the URL you showed there. Uh, add them into uh, and you just reference them in the, in the config file for a CK editor. Mm -hmm. And most of them just works out of the box, no Drupal coding needed. Mm -hmm. <laughs> also, uh, <coughs> we've, been we're, we've been using the uh, CK image 2 plugin for a while with Drupal mm -hmm. 7. Um, that's like the basis for the Drupal 8 implementation. Yeah. And uh, that's ac it's actually possible to uh, hack it in place in just a couple of hours, sort of. Uh, what we've done on a few sites is that we use uh, the standard media module to add the inline images into the body field, uh, just the normal way. Mm -hmm. And um <coughs> then we, but we, uh, then we have uh, installed the um, image to CK plugin, mm -hmm. so that when you double click the image in line, you get the options from image two. Mm -hmm. 
so that you can uh, align left and right, add captions and so mm -hmm. forth. Mm -hmm. It's just a like two hour work and it just works. Yeah. It's sweet. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, yeah. We still we now have to the new version inline editing and the iframe thing. Yeah. And about the letter, that iframe thing. Will that uh, always be there or is it possible to always use uh, inline or uh, I believe the framed of version things? of Siki editor is there because many times the back end team is different from the front end team. So it doesn't make sense to actually use inline editor in the administration interface because also the HTML structure that is on the front end part of Drupal is different from the thing that you have in the back end. That's why uh, the iframed version is used because it's you know, much safer and it makes sense in that context. Uh, does it answer your question more or less? Uh, uh, <laughs> so it doesn't break any functionality to use it. Uh, uh, if we use inline editor instead of classic editor in the administration backend, in the front end, is it, is it, does it, do you have extra functionality with the iframe? Uh, uh, the, 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 the main difference when uh, the iframe is used is uh, with uh, CSS styles, uh, because when you use iframe to uh, render the editable, uh, you know, the, the, the CSS styles for your content will not affect the thing that you will see in the editor. So for example, if for any weird reason you make some elements invisible, like the strong element on your website, uh, the element will be visible in uh, the classic version of the editor, which is using an iframe because those styles will not be used uh, there. Uh, yeah, as I said before, the, there is no difference between the inline version of CG editor in general, apart from styling. Uh, well, their slight difference might be in the list of bugs that it has, <laughs> uh, but you know, don't tell it about it to anyone. <laughs> okay, thank you. <laughs> All right, next question. If not, let's just end this session. And thank you once again for coming here.